morning, Van Street. How many of y'all know that the Lord is my light and my salvation?
Will you remain confident? Will you remain confident? Will you remain?
give God some worship. Come on, come on, let's give God some worship. Come on, come on, let's love on God right there. Come on, come on, let's love on God right there. Come on, let's give him glory. Let's give him glory right there. What is the highest praise? Yes. How I many you know that God is a good God and he's worthy of the praise? Come on, we didn't come for no form of fashion this morning. We came to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We came to give his name glory today. We came to lift him above every situation. Come on, help us worship him this morning. Turn your living room, turn your bedroom into an altar and begin to cry out to God and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, we worship you today. Lord, receive our worship. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning, Van Street. It is good to see you all this morning. It is good that we are able to worship together one more time. And this worship team has just blessed me this morning. They have been singing with a passion and a fire for God. This band has been just absolutely killing it, and I have enjoyed myself in the service thus far. We thank God for how he is blessing us and how he is keeping us and how he is always able to provide resources and provide ways out of no way. I just thank God that he is our God and that we can love on him at any time, and we just are so thankful today. Look, I'm not going to worry your patience long. I got one verse today. It's in the gospel according to St. John chapter number 11, verse number 17. It's the gospel according to St. John, chapter number 11, verse number 17. While you are going there, quickly I want to just announce to you all that our amazing youth department, they're going to be holding a virtual conference on July the 31st and August the 1st. We are super excited. Uh, the conference theme is Let's Talk uh, about these different conversations, the bigger picture. Did I get that right, Brother Sean? I get that right. It's, let's talk about the bigger picture. And so we have some amazing speakers coming. We have our own councilman, Barry Mayo. We have Dr. Mary Hemphill. We have uh, Assistant Attorney General Tory Dix Dixon. And so we are excited about all of those who are going to be participating. And it's going to be an amazing, an amazing conference. So I'm asking you to scroll down our Facebook page. Go ahead and register. Let's support our young people who are doing, still doing ministry, even though we're not inside the walls of the church. 
And not only are our youth department doing some amazing things, our women ministry, they have a, a book club on Monday. They're reading a book and they are absolutely having a fantastic time. And I, I happened to slip in on a little part of the conversation on this past Monday and look like they were just having an amazing time. So we can still have ministry even when we're not inside the church walls. It's time for us to be creative. It's time for us to think differently about how to get this ministry out. Amen. The gospel according to St. John, chapter number 11, verse 17, reading from the NIV version, reads as thus. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Amen. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise even now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have just blessed us to see another day, another day that you have made and a day that we are extremely excited to be in. We ask now, Lord God, that as we come before your holy and sacred throne, that you will hide us behind your cross. Lord God, allow them to see none of me, but to hear and see all of you. I pray now, Lord God, that you will just bless us like only you can, that you will take us from uh, a place of disappointment, a place of uh, not feeling adequate to a place of wholeness. I pray now, Lord God, that you will just uh, breathe upon this platform, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will breathe on me right now, Lord God. Hide me when God allows good trouble. Uh, civil rights icon, Representative John R. Lewis, who devoted his life to racial justice and equality, died Friday night at the age of 80. He revealed late last year that he was undergoing treatment for stage four pancreatic cancer. Lewis, a Georgia Democrat, has served in the House of Representatives since 1987. Following decades of work as an organizer and activist, serving as a founding member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, organizing the March on Washington in lockstep with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and serving in the Atlanta City Council. He was an orator unlike many others, his words galvanizing action for multiple generations. Let me quote for you a powerful observation for Representative Lewis. He said, and I quote, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never ever be afraid to make no some noise and get in good trouble. He called it necessary trouble. Lewis's approach to politics was guided by his belief in getting into good trouble. That is, a willingness to confront the world's many injustices regardless of the consequences. That if we are to move forward, we have to be willing to confront the obstacles in our way so that a way forward can be revealed. And what I like about this quote and mantra that Lewis adopted is that if we allow it, God will use the same good trouble to reveal to us who he is and how we are to move forward. Here, here is what God does. He, he allows challenges and crisis situations to come into our lives. And it is through these situations that we discover God in a way we never knew him before. When God is ushering us to new levels of intimacy with him, he expects us to confront the good troubles with faith in him. Anybody ever had God to use good trouble to get you closer to him, he will reveal to us the nature of who he is and the unlimited power he possesses through our many challenges. It's one thing to say that God is a healer. It's a whole different ball game when he heals your body. And, it's, and, and you know that he is a healer. It's one thing to say that he is a way maker. But when you find yourself lost and looking for direction, it's not until he opens your eyes 
and shows you the reckoning that you can say, I know that he can make a way out of no way. It's one thing to say that God is a provider when your refrigerator is full. But it's a whole other type of knowing him when, when you lost your job and he still provided a meal for you each and every day. If, if I needed a witness today, I would call on the children of Israel. When the Israelites fled Egypt on their way to the promised land, God allowed them to run into an obstacle that they could not overcome. He allowed them to get pushed up against the Red Sea. But in allowing them to reach the end of their ability, he revealed to them what he could do when there were no more options available to them. So in essence, God allows us to experience certain trials and hardships just to reveal how unlimited his power and his glory really is. And hear this, y'all. He allows these good troubles to come into your life so he can demonstrate to you his power and his glory. God does some of his best work when our backs are against the wall. He uses tough times that we find ourselves in to show us his power, his presence, and his ability to turn our situation all around. See, see, the purpose of trials, or shall I say, the good trouble in your life, is often a way to show you that when you cry out to him, God will come to your deliverance. And when this happens, you get to know his power, his presence, and his purpose at a higher and deeper level than you ever had before. You come to know God in ways you can never know him when life is simply comfortable and without good trouble. You, you really didn't have a prayer life until God allowed good trouble to come into your life. You, you really didn't know what love was until God showed you what real love looked like. You didn't even know how strong you were until some bitter lemons came into your life. And even though lemons are bitter, you found out that if you add just a little bit of sugar to it, that you can squeeze the lemons out while you're adding the sugar and you can make some lemonade out of it. You thought you couldn't praise them after they hurt you, but he added some sugar to your praise and he squeezed it out of you. You thought you couldn't lift up holy hands after they talked about you, but he added a little sugar to it and he squeezed it out of you. You thought you had no more love to give because of that ultimate betrayal, but he added a little sugar to it and he squeezed it out of you. And, and, and while most of us us, uh, assume all blessings include favor and things going well, God tells and shows us that he can also bless you in your painful moment. After all, pain is what alerts us that something is wrong. So a downturn in your situation can actually be a blessing that puts you on the path to an upturn. I wish I had some witnesses here. If it was in the added stress on the Israelites' work as slaves in Egypt, God help me, that caused them to cry out to God. This caused God to respond to their cry and usher them into their eventual freedom and establishment as their own nation. Hebrew 12 tells us that God would often shake things up in order to usher you in to something new. Never look at your crisis or your good trouble as merely a negative thing that you must endure because your good trouble or your pain can become positives when you deal with them properly. There are good ways of reaching into your life and placing you on a pathway to your purpose. So, so let me encourage you all this morning not to give up when good trouble comes your way. Don't stress out over your circumstance. Don't lose your mind over this pandemic because if you can hold it together, God has chosen you to get some glory out of your life. He's going to use you to show his awesome power. He's going to use you to display his authority. So instead of going crazy because of your predicament, just continue to give God worship. Just continue to give God praise. Just continue to lift him up. 
Don't lose it now because you're about to come right out of this mess. Your breakthrough is right on the other side of your pain. And if you can just hold on a little while longer, God is going to show up and turn your situation around. And, and this is what we have in the text this morning. Uh, Magic, I feel my help coming, sir. This is what we have in the text this morning. God has created some good trouble to reveal his unlimited power. You all know this story. It's a very familiar story. It's a story about Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus. Now, it must be noted that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were all good friends. They knew Jesus very well, and yet even with them knowing Jesus as well as they did, they still found themselves needing to learn more about his power, God, and his glory. And as a matter of fact, the closer you get to God, the more good trouble he puts you through. God, God is saying, I had to put you there so I could show you something else about who I am. I had to take it away so I could reveal my power and my glory to you. You had to go through it so you could see my all-powerful hand in every aspect of your life. So it is here in this 11th chapter of the gospel according to St. John that we find Lazarus who is sick unto death. Mary and Martha send word to Jesus to come because their brother is dying. And they believe if Jesus can just get there, that he could heal their brother. But Jesus takes a different approach. And he says, I'm going to let him die. God, help me. And this is the first point of the text, y'all, that when God allows good trouble, it's because he needs to take your faith to the next level. Can I say that one more time? When God allows good trouble, it's because he needs to take your faith to another level. Uh, the writer of Hebrews gives us the biblical definition of faith by stating in Hebrews 11 and 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So in a sense, faith is the belief in something you can do something that I cannot do. And it becomes a requirement to possess other things that are yet to be seen or discovered. D.L. Mudi says it like this, and I quote, that faith believed God without any ifs. Can I say that one more time? He, he says that faith believes in God without any ifs. So when a believer believes in God without any ifs, there is nothing that becomes impossible for God to fix or to overcome. And when you have this type of mindset, it forces you to act like things are all possible with God on your side. Uh, this is noteworthy because now my faith in God must outweigh any and everything I see in front of me. This now means that God will remove people and things that you are close to and he removes these things so that he can get closer to you. And if moving these items or these people out of your life means you will arrive at a deeper relationship with him, that it will strengthen your faith, he may move some stuff out of your life. You thought you needed those friends to, to, to validate you. you. You thought you needed to have X number of followers on social media to be important. You thought you had to have the job with the corner office to be somebody. You thought you had to have a certain kind of car to have a certain type of swag. You thought you had to be in control in order for it to work out. But God is saying all you need is to have faith in me. And to prove it, I'm going to put you in a situation to show you that all you need is faith in me. God is saying, I'm the only one that you will ever need because I'm the only one who can supply your every need. God, help me. Now, I got to point this out, y'all, because it would be irresponsible for me to, to, to not tell you that when God is working on you, when he puts you in good trouble when he's testing your faith, uh, it doesn't always feel good. 
It, it doesn't always seem like he's on your side. But I came to encourage you this morning. You are in the situation to get a revelation about how awesome your God is. Uh, he is bigger than the situation that you are in. He's better than any medicine you could ever take. And he loves you that much that he will put you in good trouble just to take your faith to another level. And it's a faith that says, I can turn this thing around. It's a faith that says, I can't quit right now. It's a faith that says, I've been through too much hell to turn around now. And it's my faith that keeps pushing me forward. It says, I will not leave here until I get what I came for. Is there anybody that's got a faith like that? That says, my faith will not let me stop until I get my healing. My faith will not let me stop until I get my deliverance. My faith will not let me stop until we have a cure for the COVID. My faith will not let me stop until we can end this racial injustice. And he allows good trouble to take my faith to another level. So, so watch this, y'all. Not only does he allow good trouble to take your faith to another level, but secondly, here's my second point, he allows good trouble so that you can remove the barriers to your blessings. God, help me. Look, look at what Jesus does, lady. Look at what Jesus does. He shows up some four days after Lazarus has died. And one of the first persons that he runs into when he gets there is Martha. Now, get this, y'all. Martha is upset. She is full of emotion, and she confronts Jesus. She says, Lord, if you would have been here, our Lazarus would not have died. Don't, don't miss this, y'all. Don't miss this. She puts the responsibility of the death of her brother on Jesus. God, help me. How many of you have ever been so hurt that you blame Jesus for your hurt? You know, you, you know, if he had showed up, he could have turned your situation around. But because he did not show up, you blame him for the reason of your pain. God, if you would have just showed up, I wouldn't be in this situation I'm in. God, if you had just showed up, I would have made it to the next level. God, if you would have showed up, I wouldn't have to worry about paying my bills. God, if you would have showed up, I would have got the healing that I needed. Now, now, here is an interesting note, lady. Even though Mary and Martha believed that Jesus could heal their brother, they never conceptualized that he could raise Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and too many times, we minimize the power of God with the shallow thoughts of our minds. And I believe Jesus had to wait until four days after Lazarus had died to reveal to everyone his sovereignty and his power, that they are greater than the capacity of our minds. And now he is trying to help Martha remove this barrier of doubt that she is carrying around in her mind. Some, some of you can't get your healing or your deliverance because you don't fully believe that God is able to do it. And for many of us, we need to be like that father uh, that said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Help me to believe that my healing is on the way. Help me to believe that it's going to happen for me. Help me to believe that I can find love again. Help me to believe that joy is right around the corner. Help me to believe that I'm going to make it through this situation. So look at what Jesus does. He tells Martha to remove the stone from in front of the tomb. Martha said, my Lord, I'm sure that the body's got a bad odor by now. King James says, I'm sure that the body stinketh right now. Now, uh, now notice that Jesus, don't miss this, y'all. Jesus himself could have rolled away the stone because he had the power to do that. But instead, he instructs Martha to roll the stone away. He is demonstrating that any obstacles or barriers keeping you from your blessing will need to be removed by you. Uh, let me say that one more time. If you're planning to get your blessing, you've got to remove the barriers of doubt so that God can get you to your blessing. 
He's not going to remove anything that you can remove by yourself. You've got to change your mindset from I can't do it to I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. So God, give me the strength. I'm, 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 I'm feeling good, y'all. God, give me the strength to remove these boulders of disbelief, these large stones of doubt and fear, because I want to receive every blessing that God has for me. Is there anybody worshiping with us online this morning that can say, I want everything that God has for me? If he's got peace, I want it. If he's got joy, I want it. If it's a financial blessing, I want it. If it's a better worship, I want it. If it's a better praise, I want it. If it's a better dance, I want it. Whatever God has for me, I want it. So, Lord, help me to remove these barriers. God, help me. I'm about to get out of here, y'all. So not only does God allow good trouble to take your faith to the next level and also remove barriers out of the way, but lastly, y'all, he allows good trouble to demonstrate nothing is stronger than his word. Uh, this is good, Magic. Uh, he, here it is, y'all. Uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are in a seemingly no way out predicament. Mary and Martha are experiencing the pain of losing a loved one. And Lazarus finds himself in a dead situation. And it is at this point that Jesus decides to show up. And not only does he show up, but he begins to speak a rhema word into their situation. It's this rhema word is a right now word. Th this rhema word is defined as an utterance that causes things to move into action. Uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Pastor? It, in the book of Genesis, when God spoke, let there be, he spoke a rhema word. And when he spoke the rhema word, it caused a flurry of action to take place. The world began to take form. The grass began to grow. The land was separated from the water and life began to take form. When he spoke this rhema word, the environment had to take action and God's glory was revealed to all mankind. And I came to share with you this morning that your good trouble is not designed to take you out or to destroy you, but it is designed to reveal to you God's glory and his power. Look at what Jesus says in the text, y'all. He says, okay, Lazarus, you got sick and died. But now let me show you that in spite of your situation, I have already overcome the troubles of the world, God. And I can hear him saying, it doesn't matter what mess you are in. It doesn't matter that you're stuck at home because of this pandemic or that you are deemed an essential employee and, a, and, a, and are exposed to the virus or worse, you have lost your job and can't find a way to pay your bills. God is saying, I am here, and through this, not only am I going to bring you out, but I'm going to get your praise, and it's going to be a praise that I have never had before. If you trust me, you're going to come out of this, and when you come out of this, you're going to have a praise and a worship that you've never had before. God is saying, I'm about to get some glory out of your life. So, so Jesus observing that Mary and Martha were about to break, he sees that they were at their wit's end, and now he begins to speak a rhema word into their lives. And it's good to know that just before the bottom falls out, that God will send you a rhema word that will settle your spirit that will lift you up just when you needed it most. And this is what Jesus does. He says, Mary and Martha, this is not the time to give up. You just rolled back the stone. You just removed your barriers. And if you keep on believing in me, you will see the glory of the Lord in full manifestation. So as they begin to roll back the stone, Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, 
his body had began to decay. The aroma of death was permeating from the tomb. And it was at that moment that Jesus speaks a rhema word. Jesus yells out to Lazarus. He says, Lazarus still in his death garments. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And when God calls you, it doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter where you are. When he calls you, you must come to him. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but he's telling you that it's time to come out of your dead situation. It's time to come out of depression. It's time to come out of that sickness. It's time to come out of that mess you're in. It's time to come out of that unhealthy relationship. It's time to come off them drugs. God. It's time to come off the alcohol. Come out of that dead situation. Because when he speaks to us, no matter what has us bound, it's got to let us go. Because his word has got more power than what's holding us. Good day, Van Street. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may his grace be upon you. But can I get somebody to help me close this sermon that understands that when God speaks a word over your life, it doesn't matter what has you bound. His word will deliver and set free because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. It was his word that delivered the children of Israel through the Red Sea when he told Moses to raise up your rod and say cross over to the other side. It was his word that allowed Peter to walk on the water when, when he told Peter to come unto me. It was his word that calmed the raging sea when he went on top of the ship and he said, peace be still. It was his word that healed the man at the pool. He had been there for 38 years and Jesus said, rise, pick up your bed and walk. And it was his word that forced death to let Lazarus go. When Jesus walked up to the tomb, he said, Lazarus, it's time to come forth. Everything that put Lazarus in the grave had to give away to Lazarus to God's word. Even though his heart has stopped beating. Even though his blood has stopped moving. Even though the maggots and the spiders were eating at his flesh. Even though his tongue had been glued to the roof of his mouth. When Jesus says, Lazarus, it's time to come forth. Even though you're sheltered in place. Even though you got to wear a mask right now. Even though you got all hell breaking loose in your household. When Jesus says, you need to come forth. Everything that had you has got to let you go. When Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. The spiders and the maggots had to spit out the flesh that they had been eating. His heart began to beat again. His blood began to flow again. Everything that was taken from Lazarus had to be restored. And I came to tell somebody, you're not too far gone. Your situation is not that dead that a word from the Lord can't bring you out. Is there anybody here that can say everything that has been taken from me? I want to get it all back. And I just came to prophesy to you that when he calls your name, you're going to get it back. You're going to get your heart back. You'll be able to trust again. You're going to get your smile back. You won't look like what you've been through. You're going to get your dignity back. Because what you went through didn't break you. Can I tell you, you're going to get it back. You're going to get your joy back. You're going to get your peace back. You're going to get your swag back. You're going to get your stuff back. And I'm so glad that Jesus is still speaking a word that will bring me out of my mess. He's calling me 
And he's calling you to come forth so that we can move into our purpose and into our destiny. He's calling our men to be better fathers. He's calling our women to be better mothers. He's calling the prostitute to come off the corner. He's calling the drug addict to stop getting high. He's calling our churches to stand and fight for social justice. He's calling for Christians to love one another as he loves us. He's calling because he wants to make you complete and walking and lacking nothing. He's calling because he wants to reveal his power and his glory through our lives. He's calling you. Can you hear him calling your name? It's time to get up. Get your rusty dusty up. I know you're sitting on the couch, but begin to get yourself up and say, I've been there too long. I've got to make moves. God's got something for me. Get yourself up so you can go to the next level. Get yourself up so you can make some positive moves. Get yourself up so that you can be what God intended you to be. But not only y'all, and I got to get out of here. But I feel God pushing me. But not only does Jesus tell Lazarus to come forth and watch the text, y'all. He commands them to loose him and let him go. Jesus is telling Lazarus, it's your time. It's your season. I'm going to loose you so you can go get it. What I have prepared for you, I'm going to loose you and you can begin to walk into the future I plan for you. Everything that had you bound has to loose you and let you go. Insecurities, loose me and let me go. Self-doubt, loose me and let me go. Unbelief, loose me and let me go. Fake friends, loose me and let me go. Unproductive relationships, loose me and let me go. Poverty, loose me and let me go. A bad boss, loose me and let me go. It's my time, it's my season. I'm ready to get it. I'm ready to get it. Come forth. Come forth, man of God. Come forth, woman of God. Come forth and see the salvation and the glory of the Lord. Somebody say, yeah. Say, yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Come on and get it. He's already loosed you. He's already loosed you. He's already loosed you. Come on and grab it. It's right there. Your joy. It's right there. Come on and grab it. It's right there. It's right there. Yeah! And what I like about it, y'all, that God uses good trouble to move you into the next level of your life. You was trying to keep it alive. You was trying to preserve it. But God said I had to kill it so I could get you something better. I wish I had somebody online that don't worry about when friends walk away from you. Don't worry about when the job is not cut out for you. That God is letting it die so that he can call you into something new. I wish I had somebody who knew what I was talking about. That when he let that one thing go, that he blessed you with more things. I wish I had somebody that knew what I was talking about. They said, Pastor, I know that's right. 
He cut that sorry joker out of my life And he sent me my new spots He cut that job out of my life So that I could get the promotion He cut that bill out of my life So he could bless me with more money Can somebody say, I know that's right when God allows good trouble, it's not to break you. And I like Cong Congressman John Lewis, Representative John Lewis. He said, good trouble is the foundation for moving forward. He says, the way that we move forward is not always built on comfort. It's not built on amenities. It's built on trouble. So what are you trying to say to us, Pastor? Here's what I'm trying to say. It's not comfortable doing church online. <laughs> Y'all don't want to be real with me. It's not comfortable wearing a mask in 90 degree weather. It's not comfortable thinking that I got to start school online. It's not comfortable having to work from home with all my family in the house. But in order to move forward, you've got to have good trouble so that you will be stronger on the other side. Our church will be better when we come on the other side. Your families will be better when we come out on the other side. And if you wear your mask, you can be healthy. God help me when you come out on the other side. Look, I know, look, I know I got, I got three teenagers. I'm still young, me and lady like to travel. I understand, I understand the pain. I understand, I, I get it. But they that wait upon the Lord, shall it didn't say might it said shall renew their strength that's the word of God so don't don't mess it up right now you want to know why the numbers are increasing because we don't have no patience we want it right now. We want it right now my way. I had somebody tell me the other day, they said, I ain't even changed since this thing been going on. I just been going to the store, I ain't wearing no mask. I get right up on top of people. Matter of fact, he was right on top of me. I had to say, hey, 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 six feet, sir, please, six feet. And we have that mindset, I get it. But just because the world has that mindset, does the church need to have that mindset? We are different. We are a peculiar people. Should we follow the world? Or should we be standard barriers? Should we be the one dictating what the world should be doing? Or should we just be following what the world is doing? I'm encouraging you today to not allow your good trouble to keep you messed up. Understand your good trouble is to bless you if you can just hold on. Who needs to come today? Maybe you're like Lazarus. The Bible doesn't say, the Bible doesn't say, lady, 
Maybe Lazarus went to Walmart without his mask. And he got COVID, Deacon Fred. He got COVID. And God had to shelter him in place. Put a mask on him and put him in a tomb. Say, I need for you to stay there four days. Or until I come to get you. Maybe you are in that situation. <laughs> You're uncomfortable. You're trying to figure this thing out. He's calling you today. He's calling you today. He's saying, come. Come on. I, I, I want to I take the mask off. I want to loose you and let you go. I want you to walk into a new future. I want you to walk into your dreams. Just because I took them away right here doesn't mean I'm gonna, not going to give them to you. I had to bury you so that you would be strong enough to handle where I'm getting ready to take you. I had to separate you from some folks so that you wouldn't be contaminated because where I'm ready to take you, I need a clean vessel. So I had to kill off some stuff to raise you in a new place. Who, who am I preaching to today? Aren't you tired of staying where you are? Aren't you tired of dealing with the same old, same old? He's calling your name and he's saying, come forth so I can loose you and let you go. If that's you today, go ahead and tag me. Put your name in the chat. Put your name in the chat. Put your name in the chat. Inbox me. Whatever you got to do. I would not stay another night in the tomb if I don't have to. He's calling you. He's calling you. Will you answer the call? Yeah. Amen. My Van Street family, once again, we love you all. We'll continue to keep praying for you. If you got prayer requests, Please go ahead and put them in the chat. We'll go back and we'll watch it. We've definitely been praying uh, for our families. Look, tomorrow we will start back with our prayer call. We're going to go at 6 o'clock. We'll be done by 6.30 so that you all can, um, those who are on the um, women's ministry book reading. Book, oh, it's, I'm sorry. It's every other week. So it's two weeks. I'm sorry. Not So, yeah, join us tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Uh, for our prayer call. Lady, you want to come up here so the people can see you? Look, my wife came with me today, y'all. I'm so excited. She came. I want y'all to see her. I want y'all to see her. Come on here, lady. We're ready to go. Go take your mask off. Come on. We love y'all. We love y'all. Look, she came out with us today, and I'm so excited that she came. She blessed me. She blessed me. She was smiling at me, y'all, while I was preaching. It made me feel good. But look, know we love y'all. We're going to pray that God continue to keep and bless you. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise and glory even now, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless people, Lord God, to let them know that their good trouble is not meant to destroy them, but their good trouble is meant to move them to a different level. I pray now, Lord God, that you will allow those, Lord God, who you are calling out of the grave, that they will decide to take that call and come out so that you can loose them so that they can walk into their newness of life. Lord God, we thank you for this message. We thank you for our Van Street family. We thank you for our visitors who worship with us. We pray now, Lord God, that you would just continue to bless and keep us, Lord God. We just want to say we love you, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, Van Street. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock.